All right there, YouTube singers. This video will serve as a pronunciation guide for the aria Signore Ascolta by Puccini. Um, this is a, a, a video, especially for those of you who are getting notes that your Italian is not so good. Uh, we will deal with a lot of the tricks to getting rid of your accent while you sing and also some of the most common errors from the perspective of a non-Italian singer um, and mainly Americans. Uh, I will go through most of the uh, phrasal doublings in the open and closed vowels and most of the most common errors that I hear when, when people do make mistakes in the Italian. Um, there will be two sections, one where I go through every single word in every single letter, how it's pronounced, and then uh, where I read the whole line. So here we go. Signore. So notice that the R is flipped and the O is closed. So here we have a, an example of a stressed O that's closed. Uh, the R is surrounded by vowels, so it is a flipped. So you I, you don't sing signore, right? No, no rolled R. Signore, it's like de, re, right? It's almost the same position like you were going to say de, but you say re. Signore, and of course G N is like the G N in lasagna. Signore. Next. Ascolta, ascolta. So the a ah is always the a is always a. Ah. The um the s when you speak uh, in spoken Italian you can say ascolta and hiss the s, but when you sing you need to leave the s on the second syllable on the second note actually. Ascolta, and um. I hear this done all the time uh, where it's ascolta. So what happens when you do that is you have a hissing sound on the S. The S is early. You stop phonation. Uh, you probably get the note that it's not legato enough. Um, and you're compared to countless other singers who know that principle and have bad, you know, are, you're being told that you have better, they have better legato than you do. Um, so ascolta. So the S is totally on the next syllable, right? The O is also closed here and stressed. Notice the uh, the L to the T. The L is phonated because it touches a T. Ascolta, if I did it in slow motion, right? So that whatever note you're singing at at that moment, the, the L will actually take the pitch of that note before you go on to the T. Next, A is a strong monosyllable. It's an interjection. It causes the next word to double. So that's why there's a rest. If you notice, Puccini writes, uh, Ah, signore, ascolta. Ah, signore. So Liu is, it gives you the sense that, that Liu is chasing after him somehow or trying to stop him. And um, that doesn't have time to actually make the double S and then the rest and the, or can't think of what to say and across the rest is that double S. So that's the whole reason why there's that rest in the first in that first phrase, right? So um, you you know when you say you say a signore double S, okay? Um, and then the text repeats. Liu straightforward enough. Non. So here's a here's another uh, interesting thing um, known usually is an unstressed position right and the word for no is in a stressed position usually in a sentence no so one is open one is closed right so the one that's n-o-n is closed the one that's not meaning no is open okay so the n is going to double the r so non regge più so red J, double G, open E, closed E at the end. So the open E is the stressed, the closed E is the unstressed. Red J. Okay, now the reason 
There is no reason for the stressed open E. Stressed syllables or the accented syllable in Italian can either be open or closed. You just have to memorize. So every single aria you do or every single role you do, uh, if you come across a new word, you have to memorize it. Or, and, and the best way is to just memorize which words are open and which words are closed. Um, so red, J. The unstressed, the, the second E, is, in, is not in the accent. So those we know are all closed. Okay, and even though you might see in some diction books that they are open, they write them open, what that originally meant was when Evelina Colorni did it, she did it in the book Singer's Italian. Uh, she was the coach for uh, Juilliard and also for um, uh, the Toscanini performances. Uh, she would she would coach the the you know the non-Italian singers in Italian. Um, she would have her singers open the endings. It didn't mean that they were open vowels. She didn't transform them to a eh and a, ah, but that instead of singing a eh, you know really closed and o, oh, she wanted you to open them more than you would in speech, right? So, red, j, a, right? Open, right? That in that way, okay? In, in no way can you open those the way they are indicated in some diction books. Um, next, c, s, i, c, spezza. So, double z, and this is like this double z in pizza, right? Some Double Z's make a TZ sound, and some make a DZ sound, like mezzo, the voice, mezzo, mezzo. Uh, so it has to do whether the word had D in Latin or not. And when it came into Italian, uh, th that D is, is shown by the DZ. Uh, spezza is a double, du is a TZ, double Z. Il, cuor. So cuore is short for cuore, and you see it in librettos in both forms, cor. And this is a good thing to memorize because most of the most of the words that have the u before the o, the the, the semivowel opens the vowel. So if you memorize those, so when you see cor, you know it's open. Um, fuori, uh, words like that, right? Cuore. So it's open o. Okay. Now. I met in modern Italian it's open at the end which is very funny because it used to be closed um because it's short for I la sa me right so it was it, it was three words and then it became an interjection right so now it's I met so you can also say I may but it's more common for I met so open Right? So if it is I met, now you double the next syllable. The open vowel will go short and it doubles the next. So I met quanto, quanto. Okay? So the Q and the T, I, I talk about these, these um, the, the, the Q and the T are as close to Vo uh, to voiced as you possibly can get and have them be unvoiced. Now, what I mean by that, all consonants come in pairs, right? So the K sound can be have lots of air through it, k k right? And its cousin is g g. So when the vocal cords are engaged, it's a G. When it's unengaged, the, the vocal cords are unengaged, it's it's k, k, okay? So, um, and then T is a dental, so uh, when the vocal cords are engaged, it's d, d. When, the, when it's unengaged, it's t, t, right? So, the Italian unvoiced do not take that characteristic of lots of air going through as if you were, see, you were speaking British English, right? So, it's not quanto, right? So, it's also not guando, guando, but if you think about that position, how voiced that is, and get as close to there and unvoice it, guanto. 
you see what I mean? Oh, it's very, so close to being voiced, and it's also very good for singing. Quanto, right? If I were British, quanto. Does that make sense? Okay, let's keep going. Cammino. This is a very good word for you to practice if you are a novice at Italian, or even if you are very experienced at Italian, because it has a uh, has a double M and it has a single N, right? So I hear a lot. Camino, exactly the opposite. One M, two Ns. Well, how do we double Ms and Ns? We phonate on them. So your whole life is whether you phonate or you don't phonate, really. Um, so I want to make double M. Uh, I just have to have my vocal cords engaged. Mmm, double M. Camino, you see? Camino, Camino, one M. My... My vocal cords were not engaged on that M. Now, the N is harder, usually. Americans tend to double that. So I get camino, right? So that the coordination of, oh, I had to do a double and I had to do a single doesn't exactly happen without some practice. How do you not double an N? Well, again, you have to double the vowel before it. Eno, eno. All I have to do is voice that N so slightly and it's double N. Watch. Inno, inno, inno. See? Double N. Inno. So the N just gets in and gets out really fast. Okay? So, camino. All right, good. Going on. Col tuo nome nel. Anima. Okay, now I, I there was a slight glottal because I started each word. If you notice, there's not one open vowel in that whole line. So I'll do one at a time. Col. Tuo. So a lot of the possessive pronouns have an accent on the first syllable and the second vowel is almost like a semi-vowel, right? Tuo. Nome. Again, single M. Nell'anima. So, double L, single N, single M. How do I do double L? I just, again, phonate on the L. Nell'anima, nell'anima. And it's very easy after you double that for your brain as an American, as an English, American English speaker, nell'anima, to do another double somewhere, right? Nell'anima, right? So after that L, just keep those vowels going, going on. Now, this is beautiful because it's, word position in Italian is a very beautiful thing, and you can change emphasis. So, col nome tuo sulle labbra. So now you have a double B. Double B. So Americans are very good at double B, or almost too good at double B. So um, the difference between the way we would double it and the way an Italian would double it is that the phonation does not stop in Italian. Labra. See, double B. But I didn't go labra. I hear that all the time. Right? O mio babbino caro. Oh, you know, really, really forceful double B. O mio babbino, babbino, double B, labra, okay, labra. Now this R is rolled because it touches a consonant, so all R's that touch consonants or final R's are rolled by careful singers of Italian, including Italians, right? Labra, right, okay. Um, and going on. Ma. Now, ma is another monosyllable that is a strong monosyllable. And if you want a complete list of strong monosyllables, you can also, look, again, look in Evelina Colorni's book, Singer's Italian. It's that green book. You, you might have had it in diction class. Evelina Colorni was a giant in uh, the... Uh, in the field of Italian diction, especially acknowledging the phenomenon of uh, uh, non-phonetic Italian. We're taught all the time that Italian is a completely phonetic language. It is not. So here's the strong monosyllable ma. So what happens? So ma se. So the s doubles very slightly because of the word ma. 
So whatever, ha whatever ma precedes, the next consonant will be slightly doubled. Okay? Il tuo destino. So when you speak, again, you can say destino in his ds. When you sing, you have to say destino. Right? Single N. The S is late. And the, the uh, E is in an unstressed position. It's not accented. So it is A. It is closed. Okay, you can make three mistakes in one word, you see. It's very easy. Uh, doman, domani is, this is short for domani, tomorrow. Doman, sara. Okay, so this is the future tense. It ends on the ultimate syllable. Very, very few words in Italian end on the ultimate syllable. When you have a word that ends on the ultimate syllable, it causes a phrasal doubling. So the next word is deciso. So when sarà precedes it, you get sarà deciso. You see, sarà deciso. Just slightly, right? You don't want to stop so much. Sarà deciso. You don't want to exaggerate things. You can get a good thing and you exaggerate it and it becomes vulgar, right? It's just enough. It's like a little, just the right spice at the right time. Sarà deciso. Okay? Uh, Deciso, not deciso, not double C, right? And deciso, okay. And and going on, the next one. Noi, noi, okay, noi. You hear noi. That's because you you if if you're watching this video, there's a ninety percent chance you live in the United States or Canada, right? Where you hear everybody singing noi, noi. It does not rhyme with boy. If you listen to an Italian, um, in fact, there's a great source. It's called the Rai. If you just type in Rai, D-O-P, and I've left a link to it in uh, right before the comment section below this video. Um, it's a great source. It's been around for a long time. I've been using it for years. Uh, if I want to check up a word, you can go type in any word in the site. It's a dictionary. It's a pronouncing dictionary. And you can, and, and then you, you, there's a little sound thing, and you can just press the button, and it'll say no, -y, no, -y. maybe a little Italian guy comes on. Okay, so N O I is closed for we. V O I, the old form of you, polite in Italian, and only found in librettos nowadays, right? No one says it anymore. Is closed. Voi, and then P O I. Right? Uh, is open. Poi. It's all organized by the Italians, right? So it's a little uh it's a it's a little uh different than you would think. Okay, going on. Morem, right? So closed, closed, and two R's. Double R is rolled. Sulla. So sulla. Right? We've already done double L. Strada. Strada. Okay. Ah, ah. Right? Ah never harmonizes. It's always ah, no matter where it is, right? Delesilio. Delesilio. So you have, you can practice single L, I mean double L, single L. Beautiful, right? Delesilio. Yeah, single L, double L. Uh, A. So now, P. Perdera, perdera. So you have double R, single R, and a and a, a, a future tense which ends on a strong syllable, on the ultimate syllable, causing a phrasal doubling. So all the E's are unstressed. So your vowels in this word are a, a, a. Perdera it doesn't rhyme with chair. Perde, no. Not chair. I hear that all the time. Just as I hear in German when people sing, Americans sing Herz, they sing Herz, like hair, you know, like hair. Um, so, perderà suo figlio, figlio. So it's bouncy, right? Figlio, lio, lio. So, to do l, li, lio. That's how you get that. It's an L first and then a Y. Io. Figlio. Io. 
Okay, definitely two syllables. Eo, eo. Now that I moved to Southern California, I, there are a lot of um, span. There's a lot of Spanish influence, and it means the same thing in Spanish, but it's yo, right? Eo, two syllables. Lombra. Again, the R touches a consonant. The O is is um, closed. The M is going to sing into the next. It's going to phonate. It's going to have pitch. Ombra. Dun. Sorriso. Okay, closed O. Because it's unstressed. Both, both O's are, are closed. Um, now, you repeat liu non re je piu. So, liu can also double because it's a, an accent on the um, last syllable, right? So the the word that the name Liu could actually cause a double N, or the N could double the R. You can't do both, right? So um, the first time you say it, or the second time, it's your choice. You could say Liu non red J Piu, or you can say Liu non red J Piu. Either way, either way is valid, and you you know you can leave it to your own art artistry to to come up with that. Now, here's a beautiful little trick at the end when you're when you do this octave leap. Um, if you notice a lot of people just take a breath between ah pieta. But the reason that Italians started making a break there is because the word ah is an interjection that is a strong monosyllable. So, if you were speaking, you would say ah pieta, right? Ah pieta. If it were small, the, the space would be smaller. So, ha, pieta. See, so you go up to the P and then you don't say it. You don't do two P's. You don't do a, pieta. No, you go, a, pieta. So, how much more dramatic would it be in your mind or in your delivery, in your performance, if you had that double consonant in your head? Now, of course, you're not going to actually do a double consonant up on that high note. But the space of the P is what gives you the break. And you can sneak. It's also strategic because you can sneak a breath in there. Ah, we know all the tricks now, right? So, ha, ah, pieta. Okay. So, now let's do the whole aria line by line. So, for the flow and for the arc of the words okay and as I always say an Italian sentence is like a wave crashing on the beach there's one down okay signore ascolta ah signore ascolta liu non regge più si spezza il cuore ahimè quanto cammino col tuo nome nell'anima col nome tuo sulle labbra ma se il tuo destino doman sarà deciso noi morrem sulla strada dell'esilio it rhymes e perderà suo figlio, io l'ombra d'un sorriso, liu non regge più, ah, pietà. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, please like, please share, and don't forget, this does not take the place of seeing your coach. So, go see your coach.